everybody, top of the afternoon, Sunday sessions, episode 41, here to deliver you a ton of information about growing your e-commerce business. Super excited to be here. For anyone that doesn't know who I am, my name is Eric Castellano, and I've been in the e-commerce game for about a decade, crushing massive numbers, shipping 3 million orders a month, and helping people just like you at all levels of business growth, help you optimize your processes and your systems so you can achieve greater sales, greater profit, and provide financial freedom for you and your family. That's the name of the goal for me. So welcome, excited to have you here. Uh, the purpose of these calls is a live Q and A, right? I answer your questions, deliver information to help you grow your business. So if you got some questions, let them rip my friends. Oh, this is a great question from Derek over here. Derek Flips asked a phenomenal question, which I'm super excited to ask. And this is one of the reasons why we've been able to grow so big. Um, he said, Eric, what are your thoughts on placing orders at break even in order to get deep, deeper discounts next time around? Absolutely. I highly encourage that, right? A lot of times people are so focused on, mar on profit margin and return on investment that they fail to realize that their main goal initially when opening wholesale accounts should be building the relationship. That's the name of the game. Should be building relationship. Now, would I place uh, an order where all the products are at break even? No, absolutely not. You still operate a business. You still need to make money. So I would not place an order where the entire order is at a break even or a small loss. But what I don't mind doing, and I encourage all of you to do, is add some of those products that you're breaking even on or even losing, you know, five or ten percent on to build the relationship. And also. Ask your suppliers what they need help moving, right? This isn't a take, 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 give, or take, take, take relationship. It's a take, give, take, give, and then gain relationship, right? One hand wash the other, both wash the face. You got to offer them opportunities to let them know that you care as well. So it's not just like, hey, what's the best deals you got? What can you do for me? How can you help me? You got to be thinking about, hey, how can I help you? You know, send your vendors an email. Hey, do you have any products that you're trying to move? I'd love to review them and see if we can help you move any of that. They're going to think about you way quicker than they think about anybody else next time they get a good deal. Um, and yes, FBM is a good place to start. Um, but the goal is to transition to FBA. You know, when we first started selling on Amazon, we only did FBM. And we were averaging, you know, five or ten orders a day. And then we're like, you know what? Let's try to test at the time for us as well. It's just fruit snacks. And we're like, you know what? Let's test some of these products FBA. So we sent in like 120 units FBA. Sebastian sent them in. And uh, they all sold out in like three days, you know? So we went from selling five or 10 units a day to selling 30 to 40 units a day. And right when we experienced that, we are like, FBA is the move, it's the move. And now actually today we are 100% FBA business. Is it possible to send an oversized item to FBA that's case packed, but it's 32 inches long, which it sees max, max box, box dimensions? So yes, you are allowed to send oversized units that exceed the 25 inches on the longest dimension if it's an oversized product. The only requirement or restriction is it has to be one unit, right? So you can't send a 32 inch long oversized box with four different oversized products in it. It has to be one box that is, is above the standard requirements of 25 inches or greater. What's well, a good amount to start wholesale? I recommend between two and two and ten thousand dollars. You know, a lot of people reach out and they say, hey, I got 50K, I got 100K, what can I do with that? That would be like the equivalent of, you know, starting to trade stock options and putting 50K, all your cash flow into your first Amazon, uh, you know, call or Amazon put. Like never would I suggest that. Like ease into it, learn the game a little bit, start with two to $10,000, place a few different orders from a few different companies, learn the game, understand the fundamentals. The fundamentals of Amazon Wholesale and Amazon General are product research and access to profitable inventory. Those are the fundamentals. Most people make a mistake by thinking they know everything about product research, you know, but you gotta be analyzing the buy box statistics, the keep a chart, the competitive sellers, how much inventory is on the listing, what's the consistent BSR, is it a seasonal product? You know, is there a hot time when this product drops? The beautiful thing about Amazon, it's cool to recognize, is that these listings need to be looked at like movies, not screenshots in time. Right? There's seasonality, there's trends, there's cycles in these products. And you'll look, they're very cyclical. You'll see that the product 
it might be up for four months and then down for four months, up for four months and down for four months. And if you expand that Keepa chart to look at the inception of that listing, whether it's six years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago, you'll be able to see those trends in the market and make better educated buying decisions. What do I do if Amazon increases FBA fees and doesn't want to refund and bring them back to normal? Shall I get a lawyer? No, no. Amazon has a very, very transparent FBA fee structure. It's literally all you have to do is search FBA fees at Seller Central in the search bar. And they tell you exactly what that fee structure would be. So it would be a waste of your money to get a lawyer to try to fight their FBA fees if the fee that they're charging you is accurate compared to what it says on their FBA fee sheet, right? It's very simple to understand that. You pop it open. They got different size tiers. Keep in mind every February, the fee structure goes up, but you'd be wasting your time hiring a lawyer doing that, right? And make sure you're probably looking at actual weight versus dimensional weight. So there's a lot of confusion. I made this mistake early on because I was novice. I didn't know what I was doing, but I would send email these very, or Amazon, these very frustrated emails like, hey, you made a mistake. You're charging me too much money on this product, but that's because I was looking at the actual weight of the product instead of the dimensional weight. So the way Amazon determines actual weight versus dimensional weight, so let's say a product weighs 2.7 pounds, right? Dimensional weight is when you take the length times the width times the height and you divide it by 139. If the length times the width times the height divided by 139 is greater than that 2.7 number, then the dimensional weight governs and the dimensional outcome of that calculation becomes the new calculated weight. And the product is calculated at the dimensional weight instead of the actual weight. So usually when there's a sh uh, an FBA issue, it's because you're, you're doing a miscalculation in your actual first dimensional weight. So don't waste your money on a lawyer. Yeah, welcome to Amazon, to Swag. She said, I'm looking to scale bigger, but I find it hard to get good products with good enough ROI. Welcome to Amazon. It's you got to put in the work. They're out there. They're out there. 100% RA right now. Any advice adding some wholesale items? Yeah, open a wholesale account with a vendor and start. You know, the transition from RA to, we never really did any OA, but the transition from RA to wholesale took us a complete 18 months to make the full transition to 100% wholesale business. It's not going to happen overnight. So your first step, Joe, would be to, to build a relationship with a wholesaler. Place a small test order, $1,500, $2,000, and add that inventory to your RA inventory, right? And then what you do is you eliminate what didn't work from that order and you double down on what works. So let's say you buy 10 SKUs, six of them performed really well, two of them we broke even on, and the other three or the other two you lost on. You don't reorder those other two, right? You don't reorder the two you broke even on, and then the six that you made money, you reorder from the vendor and you add some more SKUs to the next order. And then you open up another wholesale account and you just rinse, wash, and repeat that process until, you know, maybe three months, you're now an 80% RA, 20% wholesale business. And then in six months, you're 50-50. Nine months, you're 70-30, right? 70% 70 being a majority of your business, which is wholesale, and 30% being RA. So it's a process. Are you looking at the GTIN for each ACE? And yeah, we're definitely looking at the UPC and the GTINs on the listings to make sure that they're matching uh, the inventory that we're selling. And the reason why is because Amazon about two months ago, end of December, early January, did a huge GTIN purge where they actually removed tens of thousands of listings from Amazon. Uh, we actually removed 108 pallets of inventory from Amazon due to GTIN restrictions. And it was a very organized process for us. You know, we found new listings to send the inventory out under um, existing listings, you know, created new listings, new bundles, new multi-packs to get that inventory sent back to Amazon. Some of them we had to liquidate, donate, sell at the flea markets, sell to some of our buyers who come by and stop by and buy some inventory. Um, but yeah, we're, we're definitely analyzing GTIPs and UPCs. For selling in Canadian marketplace, do you think it's better to go wider in your SKUs and less deep? I think it's better to go wider on your SKUs and less deep regardless of what marketplace you're in. It gives you more opportunity to sell. Right. It gives you a wider net to catch. So if you're not in the buy box on this product, you're in the buy box on this product, which provides more consistent sales. Do I recommend any prep centers? I do not have any direct recommendations, but I know inside of our private community, we have a list of every prep center in the United States, as well as hundreds of people who can recommend you amazing prep centers, depending on what state you're looking for. Can I get my account back if it's been suspended over a year? It depends on what the account suspension was, how many POAs you submitted. There's a lot of information that I would need to answer that question. Uh, Zaswa. 
flag. No, I can't suggest one good wholesaler. It's not part of the game. I, I don't help you by giving you a wholesaler. I hurt you by giving you a wholesaler. It doesn't help you at all. It, it, it teaches you to be me sufficient instead of self-sufficient. I don't need you to be me sufficient. You know, because then you're just going to, when you when you run out of that wholesaler or that wholesaler doesn't have the products you want, you're going to come running back to me and asking me for another one. So instead of teaching you or giving you a fish you can eat for a day, I'd rather teach you how to fish. You can fish for a lifetime, feed your whole family. So no, I cannot give you a wholesaler. But if you're looking for some gating, you could do like AE distribution, Frontier Co-op, a Target. Their, their invoices have been working recently for our gating. Um, East Bay, these are all companies that have low MOQs. They're, you're not going to make a lot of money from their products, but you could get some inventory movement and uh, get ungated in those categories. Uh, my criteria for analyzing products with variations is check the buy box statistics, as well as the variation checker on, uh, most importantly, the variation checker. I prefer to use AZ Insight. I know there's some other softwares out there, but uh, AZ Insight's my go-to. I check the variation checker. I take the average of the percentage of reviews and the percentage of the rating. So let's say it's 10% on reviews, 10% on rating, I'll call it 7.5%, assuming that that variation is getting 7.5% of the total listing sales. So if the listing collectively as a whole variation and the parent agent is selling 1,000 units, I'd multiply that by 0.75 and I'd essentially by what is that 75 units right or no 750 units i'd essentially buy seven or that's the determination of how much that specific variation is selling 750 units that's not how many i'd buy i then analyze the competition of that specific variation by looking at the buy box statistics and the competitive sellers and i'd make an educated buying decision by dividing the number of competitive sellers taking 750 and dividing it by the number of competitive sellers and then making an educated decision that way.